What's up, guys? It's Rico here, CEO of Source Fine Asia, host of Made in China podcast, and the host of the Source Fine Asia YouTube channel, also the host of SFA Digital Summit. This is day two. Day two is all about the nitty gritty of manufacturing, uh, production management, quality control, and uh, a little bit of shipping as well. So, we're going to be covering the manufacturing pitfalls. Uh, that's Luke Francis. Mike and myself are going to be talking about the actual production management. We have Andy Church talking about quality control. We have Design for Manufacturing by Renault Angeron. So it's going to be an intensive day. Really, really good content that we have for you. And uh, just get some coffee to get my day started. You know? I want to talk a little bit about the pros of sourcing from India. So one of the biggest advantages uh, you'll find sourcing from India is that there are a lot of different unique products that are not found in other countries. India has a very rich history of handcrafted products, for example. I mean, that is one major category and that is uh, specifically very appealing to Amazon and e-commerce sellers because these products are very unique and uh, they're made from different materials like metal, wood, fabrics, um, there are a lot of natural materials as well, such as jute, for example. So these types of products you won't find in other countries, specifically China, and that really helps differentiate your products from other, uh, from other, especially if you're selling on e-commerce. Also low MOQs, that's a big advantage. Now when you're sourcing from China, of course, MOQs is a big issue. I and mean, if you're an entrepreneurial kind of importer, then um, you know sometimes this can be an issue. In India, especially for the handcrafted products, suppliers are willing to do low MOQs, as low as 200 to 300 pieces. And of course, in some cases, you know, the price may be a bit higher or you might not be able to customize your products as much as you would be able to for uh, a higher MOQ, but at least it's still possible. They're willing to negotiate and work with you on lower MOQs. And sometimes the MOQs are dictated by the packaging, for example, you know, so you can always talk to suppliers and find out what exactly is the MOQ for and try to negotiate but I think the important thing is that in India, a lot of suppliers, they are willing to negotiate for low MOQs. Whereas in China, we find that there are fewer suppliers who um, are, are willing to you know, talk about MOQs. Also, a lot of the suppliers that you will deal with in India are, they're fluent in English. Of course, in China too, you find suppliers, you know, speak in English, but it's just a bit more uh, easier to communicate with suppliers in India because they are, you know, a lot of them have in fact studied overseas in the UK, in the US, and they come back to India to manage their business, to manage their family business. A lot of the businesses are family run. So you'll find that in most cases, communicating is much easier. There's less that's lost in translation or, you know, sometimes when you're communicating with your uh, supplier in China, it's difficult to understand what exactly they are trying to communicate, but that's less of an issue in India. Also, currently there are no trade tariffs. So if you're in the US specifically uh, and you're importing from China, there are trade tariffs, so 35, 40% uh, additional trade tariffs. So that is not, um, there are no trade tariffs on products from India. And so sometimes even if the actual price of the product is slightly more expensive in India, you'll find that overall the landed cost can be lower because of um, these, because there are no tar tariffs. Also in India, you'll find that there are companies that are really export focused and they understand the requirements and the standards of overseas markets. And um, you also want to make sure that you are dealing with these export focused companies and they're quite professional and they, they understand um, you know, what, what your requirements are in terms of the design as well. Uh, a lot of these companies exhibit at overseas trade shows in the US and they keep in touch with the trends that are uh, you know, popular overseas. And sometimes they also work with overseas designers. So they either hire consultants or they have full-time employees that are from uh, you know, foreign markets and, and design their products. Also, you'll find that eco-friendly products are um, you know, very, very popular in India nowadays. And um, there's a lot of interesting product categories over here that um, uh, you know, e-commerce sellers could explore. So for example, there are these um, disposable plates that are made from areca palm leaves. Those are actually quite popular on Amazon too. And um, uh, you know, that's a huge product category from India. And uh, there's also a lot of R&D going on into things like disposable dinnerware made from sugarcane waste, which is known as bagasse. So that's another popular product. Other eco-friendly products as well, organic cotton, for example, that's a huge category. And um, so you'll find that in terms of eco-friendly products, there's a huge uh, variety of products to source from India. 
also labor costs are lower in India in general than they are in China. And in fact, in China, labor costs have been going up for the last, you know, five, 10 years. And um, in fact, a lot of the garment production has moved out of China because of higher labor costs. So if your product is labor intensive, if it requires, you know, manual work, then your product uh, will be cheaper to produce in India. Of course, you have to make sure that the raw materials are available locally and, you know, there are a lot of other variables as well. But if you're doing an apples to apples comparison and if the raw materials and everything is available locally, then you'll find that the, the overall price of a product that is manual and labor intensive will be lower. And some examples are, you know, basic garments, low end garments, um, also things like bags, footwear, they can be cheaper to produce in India.